Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're here for episode three of Talking Sports with the one, the only, Murph. Hello? Chat, today we are going to talk. Uh, we're going NFL, as you see right here. Repping the old school Donovan McNabb, JCPenney jersey that I got when I was like, 10 13 i don't remember when i got this so I'm surprised it still fits me you know put on some pounds since then um but yeah we're gonna talk first uh our first topic is we are actually gonna talk something that's you know relative to the murph here with his team the baltimore ravens we're gonna talk about lamar jackson and wanting to get traded away from baltimore Take us away, Murph. What? What? Let's let's see your thoughts on it. I mean, you know, um, I think the Ravens are not paying him enough, but it's like having a an, uh, like a really toxic ex. Like, you know, you block her, but then you don't block her on everything. So every now and then, when you're feeling kind of lonely, you can just hit her up. I think that's what they did with the franchise tag with Lamar Jackson, where they're like, "Oh, you can look at other teams, but if we want to keep you, we're just gonna keep you." nothing you can do about it and I don't think that's fair for in my eyes and in my opinion a Hall of Fame quarterback because Michael Vick Hall of Famer Donovan McNabb I think he's in the Hall of Fame all these quarterbacks have the same play style as Lamar Jackson and for Lamar Jackson to be as good of a quarterback as he is I understand he got hurt um, especially this year in the playoffs he got hurt and Tyler Huntley had to come through and fuck us over which is okay you know but it's okay but I think Lamar Jackson should try to find a different team because John Harbaugh is not giving him the amount of money that he really deserves. Yeah, I mean, Lamar Jackson is a good quarterback. I mean, as everyone, you know, everyone came in saying, you know, he was a running back. He didn't deserve to play quarterback. And, you know, realistically, if you look over the last five years, you know, he's probably been one of the top ten quarterbacks. Oh, I'm not sure what... If sti- where statistics are, but if you look at over him, him and winning and everything like that, he's, you know, he's definitely put it on. He showed that he's more than just this running quarterback. Um, you know that everyone. You no, know, I th- I think Ravens. You know, at this point in time, I, I mean, it's kind of similar to you know the Packers and the Aaron Rodgers, but you know, trade them away. You know, you neither side is benefiting from holding this player at the end of the day if you know you might not be getting what you expect to get out of them but at that point in time too that shows that you're putting a lot more money on this person that you're not willing to you know pay them or do when you're trying to trade them but you think they're a certain value and you know whether that's picks players you know whatever it is i feel like you know lamar jackson definitely you know I think for him and Baltimore, you know, it helps Baltimore rebuild. Also helps Lamar get to somewhere with a team that, you know, wants to pay him. Because you have a money quarterback. And I mean, like, even if you haven't gone to a Super Bowl this year, you've either gotten to the playoffs and lost, or you've gotten extremely close to the playoffs. And let's be realistic, how many times did Joe Flacco do that for us? I think he only did it once. I know it was twice, but... Yeah. Joe Flacco, you know, people don't really play with Lamar Jackson's name like they do with Joe Flacco. I think it's part, you know, partly, you know, that playing style of his, unfortunately. You know, he has that type of playing style that, you know, is different, you know. those And it, I feel like those mobile quarterbacks, you know, from a perspective of, you know, a GM, a team, is those running quarterbacks typically don't last as long. So I feel like that's why they, you know, teams have a harder time wanting to put these money into these, you know, scrambling quarterbacks because, you know, you know they are willing more to get hit, which could be, you know, potentially injured, which could, you know, shorten their playing career. Yeah, I get that. But in that same token, you know, you got to talk about the halfback thing. If people invest a lot of money, uh, like for example, Marshawn Lynch, he's one of those quarterbacks that was a uh, quarterback. Right? He, Marshawn Lynch is one of those halfbacks that just put his head down and would just through the line both sides. 
stuff through the secondary just to score a touchdown. And Marshawn Lynch spent a pretty decent amount of time in the league. You know, Frank Gore, he retired, he, he retired relatively early too. Came back and just he wasn't the same and he got back out. Yeah. Alright, good night. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say if you can invest money into players that have the same exact play style who are willing to get hit, then you should do that for each and every position. I, and I, I think that the problem with that, too, is why, you know, the quarterback is always considered the franchise person, you know. Yes, you yeah. know, Marshawn Lynch was a good thing, but, you know, who's always talked about on the offense side? It's the quarterback, you know. Whether that's, you know, because of the stats, because, you know, wins or losses, it's always put on the quarterback. It's never put back on, you know, on a receiver, on a running back. And I, I think that's the point of, too, why – you know, these quarterbacks are getting paid so much money is because they, you know, are the ultimate shot callers. You know, they're the ones that are going to determine the success of your team because, you know, as a quarterback, you still have to hand it off. Um, yeah, all that pressure is on you. Yeah. And bro, Murph doesn't know nothing about sports. <laughs> uh, okay, Ambro. Okay, Ambro. Um, but. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, like I said, it's definitely hard, um, with that, uh, yeah, like I said, I think, you know, we're just getting to the point of time that quarterbacks are, you know, just the future of the league. I mean, if you look at the highest played court players in NFL history and you look over the last 10 years, it's always, you know, it's always the quarterbacks that's being talked about. Um, it's you know and that, that they're gonna get the money because they're the ones that are gonna determine win or loss on the offensive side yes as a receipt like receiver you have to catch the ball as a running back you know you know you have to you know yes you're running for yards but at the end of the day the quarterback is the one that has to you know see hey this is the hole we need to get you and hey this is you know this is i have to hand it off and you know we're getting a lot to those like run pass option offenses too where the quarterback has to make a quick decision on it. Is he throwing the ball or is he running the ball? Or, or is he going to hand off the ball? And so I think just there's so much of that stuff. Plus, as a quarterback, you get to the line, you're the one that's you know going to be calling the audible. If you see something on defense where you're about to run this and your running back's about to go down you know, this hole, you have to be the one that you know changes the play. So. No, I agree completely. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and I get that aspect of it. You know, the quarterbacks and the shot callers, they're the ones that have to know the cadence and the playbook the best out of everybody else. So, you know, um, I, I don't know. In my opinion, you know, if, if your quarterback can pass and run at the same, in the same breath, um, that's one of the biggest gifts you could have, especially if quarterback's the most important in the NFL, then if you have a, a quarterback who can keep the defense on their toes 90% of the game, like, oh my God, this guy runs all the time, and they're setting up with a cut like a QB spy in a contain. And next thing you know, you've got two men open down the field for a touchdown. You know, or if they're setting up in like a, a deep zone and boom, you just let Lamar Jackson run it up the field. There you go. That's at least 25 to 30 yards. Jesus. You should be paying him exactly what he deserves and treating him like the franchise quarterback. Because there's a reason why they put that tag on him because they, they realize he's a great player. They don't want to, they don't, they, they just don't want to suffer the consequences of letting him go. They want to have their cake and eat it too, in a sense. I agree, I agree. Uh, real quickly, Vegito, appreciate the raid. Vegito with the raid. We appreciate you raining in to talking sports with the great Murfiano. It was uh, Mr. Vegito's birthday stream. If you didn't tune in, it was a great stream. Uh, did a great job. Uh, so, now the question is, is uh, who, who would you, what team do you think should trade for Lamar Jackson? Uh, I think, like, the question that I could answer is, like, kind of along the lines of, like, what team, like, are you asking me what team do I think he would fit on? Either what team, you know, what team will you fit on, what team, uh, um, what team do you think he should go to, what team needs a quarterback, you know, that type of stuff. 
Uh, I think a great team for Lamar Jackson. Uh, he's got a couple of years on him, so he does have that football field IQ. Um, and a team that desperately needs a solid quarterback. Uh, you know, another one of my favorite teams is the Saints. You know, Andy Dalton can't get the job done clearly because they're not going anywhere. They're not doing anything. And the Saints is a great franchise. Their defense, I think. Appreciate uh, the biddies, Boa. 10th or 15th, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Saints. Well, Saints were the 10th, but because of the Eagle, they had traded that to the Eagle. So it looks like the Saints. Let me look here. Um, it looks like they do not have a first round draft pick this year. Because so I know they traded to the Eagles with the Gardner, or I can't remember. I think it was the Gardner. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Sorry. They have number 29. Pick number 29. Oh, yeah. So, but that's why I say the Saints is a really good team for him to go on. Um, maybe even, I personally would like to see him on the Saints, and maybe even the Packers. The Packers have a really solid receiving core. They have a pretty solid running back, uh, you know, with the defense also isn't too bad. They have a, a deep defensive line that would be able to put up, and their offensive line is really, really good, which sets up more of those trickery plays and those option plays that you were talking about. Like, is he going to run the ball or is he going to pass? And the beauty with Lamar is you never know if they're going to run it with a halfback or with Lamar. Yeah. And... I, I like Packers, you know, would be a good team, but at the end of the day, I believe uh, Packers are gonna go for Jordan Love. Jordan Love is their future, their future guy. Um, so I don't see them trading for Lamar. I, just, yeah, I, I think, think yeah, I think they they want to get rid of Rodgers, and they can't even get enough for Rodgers. And I don't see a Lamar Rodgers swap happening. I don't think that benefits yeah, oh, yeah. either either team. I know who's gonna lose out in the draft, Denver. We traded our future. You did, Embro. You traded your future for him. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, if I had to go, it's hard. You know, a lot of these bottom teams that need a quarterback, you know, they they all have different styles. Um, yeah. You know, Carolina, they have played. You know that type of style before they've had cam newton who is that type of running um throwing back but i feel like carolina i mean they did trade up to you know the number one pick with um the chicago bears uh but i just feel like they are gonna i i don't see them doing that i think they're gonna want to go young they're trying to rebuild so why you know i don't think they're gonna put a lot um into lamar jackson or get you know they would have to give up that number one pick probably in you know Baltimore's eyes to get that you know I Houston maybe you know they had you know Deshaun Watson and originally uh, hard to tell would they you know would they would they not um, but yeah it'd be uh, interesting to see with you like I feel like Houston but I don't know again I could see Houston saying they we want to rebuild we want to start off strong and we want to get just a young quarterback and go from there and then I don't think Cardinals need a quarterback and Colts maybe, but you know, I feel like Colts are at this point in time, you know, they got a new head coach. Um, so I think they want to go young as well, and, you know, kind of restart um, instead of, cause the last few years, they've kind of just been taking quarterback after quarterback, whoever's, you know, kind of available free agency wide, you know? Um, so I feel like at that point in time, and then, I mean, Seattle, I think they're going to give Gino some more time and some, you know, things because you know Gino did well enough for them and Detroit I think they you know gave up a lot you know they kind of got some out of Stafford but I don't think they're ready to kind of take a quarterback in all the other teams that I mean looking at I think they kind of have their quarterback as of right now or they're not willing to give up um, the amount that the Ravens are going to get but if I probably had to say anything I think Houston would probably be the best location um, for Lamar Jackson. Okay. Kind of could get some young pieces around him. Um, but 
Gina had the best career. Yes, he did. And bro, yes, he did. Um, huh? uh, no, Brandon Cooks was their uh, receiver. He actually got traded to the Dallas Cowboys this offseason. So, their half pack. Uh, I'm blanking on who their halfback is, but no, I can't remember on top of my head who who their halfback is. But said so their young team and you know last few years have been kind of one of the worst teams. So, but you know we're you know we're talking Lamar Jackson. We're talking about trades. You know let's let's you know flip over to another. Uh, quarterback uh, Jalen Hurts you know he just got paid five years 255 million 179 guaranteed um, it's five year like I said five year extension um, he's gonna make on average 51 million dollars a year which has makes him the highest average and the highest paid NFL player in history uh, what kind of what's your thoughts on that Murph? I, uh, I have my thoughts, you know kind of wearing the certain team he got you know signed on by but what what's your thoughts? Uh, I think he, he deserves it, you know um, He's been very consistent for the Eagles and he's gotten the Eagles to different places where the Eagles haven't seen in the last couple of years Not to say overall the Eagles it wasn't uh, or isn't a legendary franchise in itself, but Jalen Hurts really has been putting on a show for the Philadelphia fans. Um, maybe not that much money, but you know, it's the NFL and you are a quarterback. And like you did say earlier, the quarterback is the most important position, if not the most important position in the NFL. So I, I, I do think he deserves it. He fought really hard in the Super Bowl. Um, the year before, didn't they go to the Super Bowl or the playoffs too? And they uh, were playoffs. Team. You know, they're either playoffs or they're in the Super Bowl defenders, like, each, the last couple of years, to be fair. Yeah, I, yeah and I, and I agree with that, you know, being an Eagles fan, you know, I think it's great, you know, we kind of locked up our hopeful quarterback, you know, I know Carson Wentz was that, supposed to be that guy, you know, unfortunately, injuries and I, I think just the team in general kind of let him down. You know, he was throwing to a lot of guys that were on practice squads, especially towards the end of his career. So I don't know, you know, how do you expect to, you know, have a quarterback that, you know, is throwing to, you know, a bunch of no-name receivers, you know, or, you know, weren't household names. Um, you know, it, I think it's good for the Eagles. They got their guy. Um, you know, I think at the end of the day, was he paid too much, too little, you know, it's hard to say because at the end of the day, like I said, quarterbacks are taking over this league. Um, quarterbacks are taking over this league, and, uh, you know, you have to pay those quarterbacks before they go run somewhere else. Um, and I feel like just every year you're going to get more and more money. Um, you know, these quarterbacks are going to be the highest played because, you know, the next person that gets a contract extension is probably going to be more than Jalen Hurts. That next quarterback is going to up top that person. So um, I think at the end of the day, it, like these quarterbacks, eventually it's going to come to, I think, where a league where ever all the other players are going to be, you know, very low end players. They're not going to get paid as much as they you know, want. Either the team's going to divvy out their money and get a lot of good average players, or they're going to have a couple of superstars and then have, you know, some average to mid players. Um, because the the salary cap, um, you know, will the salary cap increase? You know, everything like that could, but you know, the Eagles have a good team. You know, I was looking, I saw a stat that, um, like within like next year of the anticipated starters for this um, upcoming season, there is the following year they're supposed to be. Um, like 17 of like 22 on contract and then the following year is like 12 of 22 so like a majority of the starters on the Eagles are kind of set through the next uh, you know few years um, but like I said signing a quarterback to this much can be helped like it was really nice to have that guy but it also can hurt because you're not going to be able to play certain people so they might go walk to a different team you know I'm looking at you know yeah. AJ Brown uh, 
Devontae Smith, you know, you know, LaShawn McCoy didn't get paid a whole lot, and, you know, he walked. You know, yes, we got Richard Penny, but, you know, some of those things, like, they kind of let, you have to let some people go because you know you don't have enough money to pay Hurts what you need to pay him. And, I mean, he has been improving. It seems like in terms of the team, everybody's on board with him. You know, there's not, you never hear really any bad things about him. You hear even opposing players and teams talking good about him. Um, which is good, but you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, with this contract too, knowing Eagles fans, he is going to have to have Super Bowl. I think he has to go to the Super Bowl essentially five next straight years, if th before Eagles fans consider it a bust. Even though it might not necessarily be a bust, but knowing Eagles fans, they say if they don't take, he doesn't take him to the Super Bowl five times, and they don't win, you know, two of those, he's or three, he's going to be considered a bust quarterback. Even though, if you get to make the Super Bowl, that's really hard to do. I mean, I even saw something that the defensive coordinator who just got um, signed with uh, who uh, Colts. Yeah, I think that's where the defense coordinator or Cardinals, whatever one. I think he ended up with Colts, whatever, or Cardinals, whatever one. He said that. Like, he had the number one defense in the NFL, had, like, the most sacks and stuff like that. And Eagles fans were still calling for his head because they wanted more sacks or interceptions or this or that. It's like, I have the number one defense. What else do you want me to do? So, um, but, you know, I, I think Jalen Hurts was worth this money for what he has shown. Hopefully he continued to show that. You know, it's a young career. You know, he kind of was on the bench. Then, you know, took over half the season. Um, then led the Eagles to a playoffs and then led them to the Super Bowl this year. So I hope that continues, at least from an Eagles fan's perspective. Um, but I'll be interested to kind of see with the money we're paying him, how are we going to fill other holes that we might have? And, you know, whether it was this year or in future years, because, you know, he's taking up a, a major, you know, a chunk of the salary cap. You know, you know, we talked about you know Lamar Jackson earlier and stuff like that like you know and Lamar Jackson you know the reason he wants out of Baltimore is because they're not willing to pay him what what do you think he is worth do you feel like he is worth this Jalen Hurts type of money Murph uh, I mean in, in my personal thing is the same way you feel about Jalen Hurts you know? uh, Lamar Jackson is my Jalen Hurts so for me, I believe, and I, I mean, I've always been a fan of mobile quarterbacks because, uh, not just because of video games, you know, in a Madden, you know, you and me both know the benefits, even in Madden, of just playing with a mobile quarterback and how easy it is to manipulate that person. But that, in my opinion, it kind of translates into the real NFL because defenses set up game plans for the quarterback, but... What are you going to do with Lamar Jackson when you're like, okay, so their tendencies are on third and 13 that they're going to pass. Next thing you know, you set up for a zone coverage that's covering the deep third majority of it. And Lamar Jackson just busts through the middle and gets 20 yards. You know, in my opinion, with the way that he played, if you surrounded him with other great players for him to pass to and for him to rely on, like Mark Andrews, um, you know, him and that Lamar Jackson combination was amazing. His accuracy is there. His uh, unpredictability for the defense is there. Um, I, I, I think, yeah, I, I do think Lamar Jackson is worth that type of money. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, honestly. Like, so I have, you know, it's hard. You have... Uh, you have, you know, before Jalen Hurts, the highest paid quarterback um, was Patrick Mahomes. You know, and it's it's hard to argue that he was the highest paid quarterback at that time. You know, he has led, you know, the Chiefs to, was it, five, six straight AFC championship games. He's led them to four of those. He made the Super Bowl, if I remember, you know, at least about four of those, of those five or six years. Like, that... You know, I you know he's won two of them, you know, so he hasn't you know won them all, but he's still getting that team there. Um, you know, it's you know Jalen Hurts, you know, has done stuff, but he has not also led the you know he led the Eagles to one Super Bowl. 
you know yes he's a young quarterback yes like that but he still made more money than Patrick Mahomes which you know it's hard to argue when Patrick Mahomes has led a team you know to you know like I said the five or six straight AFC championship games four of those being Super Bowl two Super Bowl champs like it's hard to how do you you know pay a guy more than that you know and then the, but also at the same point in time I go to you know Lamar Jackson Lamar Jackson has shown he can uh, do stuff can get stuff done um, you know he has shown you know to be able to win has helped get the Ravens to the playoffs you know hasn't he's only he hasn't made the Super Bowl yet correct I don't believe no so, and that's what I didn't think, but, you know, he's, um, you know, has still led, has had good careers, um, stuff like that. You know, from my mind, you know, it's hard to say, you know, from the amount Jalen Hurts got, he has shown more in being able to get paid more than Jalen Hurts. But then at the same time, you know, I, I have a hard time because Patrick Mahomes is making less than, the, you know, potentially less than these guys, and, you know, he has the the stats, the, the Super Bowls, the playoff appearances, um, you know, to show for that money. So, I mean, it's hard yeah. It's hard to say because, you know, you, you want Lamar Jackson to get paid. You think he deserves to get paid. But at the end of the day, like, yes, he statistically and what he has done so far in his career, yes, Jalen Hurts is a shorter amount of time, but he should be paid more than Jalen Hurts, but I don't think he should be paid more than Patrick McCombs. And so, like I said, I think at this point in time, though, he deserves to be paid more than Jalen Hurts, knowing that Jalen Hurts just got this, and this is the most current, you know. Any quarterback, any player is making it. Yeah. I agree with that, you know. Um, Patrick Mahomes, uh, as much as I like to, you know, not acknowledge the fact that Patrick Mahomes is one of the greatest quarterbacks, at least of this generation. Um, you, you gotta like also understand with Patrick Mahomes is that with that Kansas City Chiefs team, they have a lot of ballers. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, Nicole Hardman. Um, I don't know what that other uh, receiver's name is, but they have um, uh, I forgot his first name. Jones. That's their defensive tackle. Yeah. He's been a star defensive tackle since. He's been playing in the NFL for years now. That team is filled with ballers. I mean, and I think, and I'm not saying, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts isn't humble, but Patrick Mahomes is definitely much more of a humble quarterback than I'll even say Lamar Jackson because he's willing to get paid less money so his, his other players can stay on the team and he can continue to do the type of things that he is still doing. Yeah. And, but the thing is, the hard to say about that is, you know, we see what these quarterbacks are getting paid now. You know, back at the time, Patrick Holmes wasn't taking a pay cut. He was getting paid more than any quarterback or any player in the yeah. NFL history at that point in time. And so, you right. know, it's – so I don't feel like it's more humbled. It's more he was making, you know, a lot less money. You know, he was – you know, it seems like less now because of the Jalen Hurts one. But at the end of the day, he was the highest paid player in NFL history when he signed that contract. Yeah. So, like, I mean, and it, like I said, I, I, I agree a quarterback should get paid. They're the ones that are risking it. They're the ones that are going to have all the, oh, you, we lost because of him or we won because of him. I mean, if, I mean, a good example is Brock Purdy. You know, yes, did he do good this year? Yes, he, I, I believe so. But he had one of the best defenses in the entire NFL behind him this year. You know, and, you know, he had the 12-1 and record or whatever he had. But at the, at the end of the day, you know, that defense is also what helped him because he didn't have to score as much points or do as much on offense because he had a stellar defense. Right. So, and I, I mean, I, I can say the same, though, for Jalen Hurts this year. Eagles were one of the top defenses in the NFL, and, you know, he, you know, so he didn't have to do much on the offensive side. So, but, you know, these quarterbacks prove enough, but do I feel like Proc Birdie is worth Jalen Hurts' money? Absolutely not. Like, I mean, he came in, he was the third string quarterback. Yes, he did great when he was there, but again, I think defense was the big help to that as well. 
but also you know you get weapons like Christian McCaffrey and stuff like that too you're gonna be able to spread out your offense a little bit more but yeah I, I think Jalen Hurts will I mean I'm sorry Lamar Jackson could get some better weapons and stuff like that yes Patrick Mahomes has had weapons but at the end they too a lot of those weapons were drafted too they weren't just given to you know some of them were you know they drafted those ones and picked those right players that would go well you know Tyree Kill um Hardman you know all these you know yes they and they go out and sign some people like that um uh like Juju Smith this offseason you know they go and sign some of those yeah. bigger names too yeah. um you know so i think i mean like i said i think we're at the point where quarterbacks are going to get paid um, it's just finding whatever team is willing to pay that quarterback. And I think, and I think the point is these quarterbacks know they can get paid. So they're just, you know, they're trying to find those teams that, are, you know, if it's not the team they're on, they're wanting to get traded because they know there's some other team that's willing to pay them that yeah. money. They they're worth. So yeah, hundred percent. offensive wins games, defensive wins championships. I fully agree with that in bro. And a lot of these, coaches and a lot of these uh, owners and things like that, you know, they take that for uh, granted, I think. Uh, I mean, and, and the Eagles made a great decision in my opinion by paying him that much money because it's kind of like putting a, a, a franchise tag on a player without actually putting a franchise tag on the player. Oh, yeah. Because the quarterback's not going to want to leave or the player's not going to want to leave the team after, you know, he's the highest paid player in NFL history. He's going to be like, oh yeah, I'm staying here. Oh yeah. But you know, a, a great counter piece to that that you made was that they're not going to have uh, like uh, barely any cap room left to it let's but just for example let's say Derrick Henry goes into the free agency and he's actually asking for X amount of dollars uh, you know the Eagles wouldn't I'm 100% sure they wouldn't have enough money to sign Derrick Henry on their team and that'd be a great addition because you gave what seems like to be a massive portion of your, your salary cap to one place and, but you know, there's you know, like I said, you know, like we talked about, you know, Patrick Mahomes got paid a lot too. But you know, they they're finding ways. You know, it just I think at the end of the day, when you have those, you have to find those players that fit with your team. They might necessarily be a household name, but they're going to be good enough to, you know, win. You know, you don't you know, they don't need to be a star name like Eagles, for instance. They you know we got rid of Sanders, but we signed Rashard Penny. Is Penny you know one of the best? running backs in the NFL? No, but is he a solid running back? Yes. So. Yeah, like uh, um, what's the uh, Isaiah Pacheco? Oh, yeah. He is a solid running back. Like you said, he, he's not the best in the NFL, but he'll get you your first downs. He'll get you the yardages that you need. Yeah, and I feel like, too, you're not seeing as much as one-headed monsters at running back. You're, you know, you're seeing a lot of these teams have running back by committees as much, too. So I think that's the hard thing too is I feel like these running backs aren't getting paid as much because it's by committee, you know. Whereas a receiver, you know, you need, you know, you want one of those number one receivers. You want a Justin Jefferson. You want an AJ Brown. You want a Tyree Kill on your team um, because you know they can spread the field and they can still even be, you know, double teamed and still make these plays. But you know, you yeah. need you need um, a committee of receivers. But realistically, if you have one great receiver and one mild receiver, it's good. Whereas running backs, you want you know, you don't you you want a committee more of them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and bro, Tom Brady is goaded quarterback because he played for the love of the game and put, he took a pay cut to help the team, and that's how we win the team over. And I and I agree with that. There, you know, there's teams that, and I think. The thing is, at that point in time, I feel like that's what was kind of wanted of quarterbacks. I think we're, you know, Tom Brady kind of was in a different generation. I mean, yes, he just played recently, but, you know, now I think it's more money than speaks than just taking pay cuts. Like, yes, Tom Brady could have been one of the highest paid quarterbacks of all time at that, you know, at hit that time. But also, I think now it's just more of every quarterback's getting paid. So every quarterback, you know, thinks they need to be paid. And, you know, but there, there is going to be some of those quarterbacks that are willing to pay take cuts. But I think it's also those teams aren't even really giving them the chance to take pay cuts because they want to pay them this much. 
in my opinion. But, I mean, kind of... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, 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 I, I was just going to say it's kind of like putting a franchise tag on a player without putting it. Yeah. But now if we kind of, you know, we've been talking quarterbacks, you know, the draft's coming up this weekend, um, you know, you, you know, there's four names kind of right now that are kind of being the buzz of all, you know, of the quarterbacks. You have uh, Bryce Young from Alabama, C.J. Stroud from Ohio State, Anthony Richardson from Florida, and Will Levis from Kentucky. Um, you know, there's a lot of teams looking for those, and I, and, you know, these quarterbacks, I think a little bit or two, are why uh, people aren't really trying to trade for Lamar, you know, whether that's because they don't want to pay as much as – you know the Ravens want, or they just you know don't want to make a trade with the Ravens at all. But you know, these these quarterbacks have you know some great potential. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that it's one of the best quarterback classes of recent, but there's still you know some good names out there. You know, those especially those top fours. You know, yeah. So um, yeah, I'll be you know, what kind of you know you have any thoughts on any of these? Up and coming quarterbacks that are potentially um, coming in the draft. I personally, I don't watch uh, NCAA as much. Uh, I don't really watch college football like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I really couldn't give you uh, an opinion on these quarterbacks like that. Uh, but. You know, I think you're in my. I, I, I agree with you. Is that maybe that's why they're not really giving Lamar Jackson the respect that he deserves? Is because uh, you know you've got these other young, great receivers that are easily molded and they can pick up the game and you know just fix themselves to become uh, adapted to the team that they're going to get drafted to. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, it was interesting. A report just came out about C.J. Stroud, which I think has kind of changed some people's possible opinions. But so they have that, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, the quarterback test uh, every quarterback takes. Apparently, he had a really low score. Like, you know, even some people are thinking like 50, 60s is considered low. He was in like the teens, I believe, if I remember correctly, from what I saw. Um, which is kind of the way you your thought processes are and stuff like that, and how you know think quick and st- like adjustments you can make and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting, you know, that you know he's considered, you know, uh, according to this, uh, the fourth um, ranked prospect in the whole draft and second quarterback, but yet he had this low, you know, low score. But again, all these quarterbacks, you know, kind of different. You know, I- I'm very curious how see how Bryce Young does. I know he's kind of the the quarterback that everyone thinks, you know, is going to kind of go first overall, um, you know, but it's hard for me. It's hard because how many Bama quarterbacks have actually been successful in the league? You know, you have a lot that come in, look good, but they never play well. You know, I know technically right now, if you really think about it, there is three Alabama quarterbacks as starters right now. You got Tua. Um, technically, if you say you have Jalen Hurts. And you also have um, Mac Jones. But, I mean, if you look at those quarterbacks, I mean, Tua has been hurt. Tua has a strong arm, has been doing well, but who knows where he's going to go. Jalen Hurts, you know, just made the most money, but he transferred out because he got benched by Tua. And then, you know, Mac Jones took over after, you know, Tua um, went through. But if you look kind of Alabama quarterbacks in previous, they just never seem to fit well once they get in the NFL. So, I'm kind of curious to see will Bryce Young kind of break that mold of you know Alabama quarterbacks. Um, but yeah, so I I mean it'll be interesting to see. I think you know you know you kind of got some pocket passers, but you got like C.J. Stroud and Richardson who can run potentially if needed. Bryce Young has you know that run capability not as much as them, and then kind of Will Levis is more of your typical he can run, but more you know a pocket quarterback so I'll, I'll be interested to see with those um kind of what happens with those quarterbacks you know um you know like i said i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them um you know are in the first like carolina i'm i'm assuming with them drafting you know trading up like they did they're probably going one of those quarterbacks now will it be strout or will it be young i don't know but i'm guessing you know 
You realistically, uh, Carolina at one, Houston at two, and Colts at four. Realistically, three you know three of the top four picks are probably going to be quarterbacks. You know, and probably maybe one quarterback will fall to eleventh, maybe seventh with the Raiders, but they just got Jimmy G, so I don't know how much they're going to want to be at a quarterback. So it, it will be it will be interesting to see. You know, you know what these teams need or if anyone here in this next few days jumps up and makes a, a splash of a trade to, you know, possibly move up. I've also heard, you know, speculation, maybe Carolina might not be set on their quarterback or know what quarterback they want. Think they might fall and they might trade away the number one over pick after just getting it, which I feel like Chicago really didn't give up a whole lot for Carolina to jump up like they did. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting, um, at least from the draft perspective, you know, Eagles, my team, you know, have 10th, you know, I've heard a different, a bunch of different things. Um, I've heard the D tackle from Georgia, uh, to pair him back with Jordan Davis, um, getting back that Bama defensive line connection. Um, I've also heard, you know, potentially taking, uh, Texas running back, um, which I know he's kind of following up some, uh, people's list. Um, but with them, you know, also losing Miles Sanders, it might be a good pick to, you know, take that. Because the Eagles also have um, the 29th pick as well. So they're the 10th and the – oh, sorry, the 30th pick. So they have the 10th and 30th pick. So they could realistically, you know, go big on this number 10 pick. Um, let's see. With the Ravens, they got 22nd. What, what's your thoughts? What, who do you think – what do they need position-wise? What do you think they need to go after? Um, With them – Having Lamar Jackson on the string, I think a quarterback uh, would be a pretty good position. Ravens have got a pretty solid defense. You know, they have a, uh, they have a great middle linebacker. They have a great linebacker core. Their defensive line doesn't need any work. Um, on top of that, you know, their cornerbacks are great. Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphreys. Uh, and I think Jimmy Smith is still on there in the slot. Jimmy Smith is one of the best cornerbacks, I think, that, in my opinion, who's ever played at that position because he can play an outside cornerback or he can play slot. He does great. Um, you know, we got, uh, uh, what's his name? Justin Tucker, you know, breaking records and stuff at kicker. And not like anybody ever drafts a kicker, but regardless, it's just covering all the bases. I think the quarterback is where they need to go. You know, J.K. Dobbins, Dust the Bust, you've got everything you need and all the other positions to keep you not even just above surface level but to help you prosper not just survive uh, but if you don't have a quarterback like we've been saying this entire time is just you need a solid quarterback yeah at least for the offense to run smoothly and create opportunities for the defense to get turnovers and to dominate games if you don't have your star quarterback anymore I don't know what you're going to do you're going to run the ball the whole time you know this isn't the NFL in 2006 where defense and running the ball was the main concern. Ray Rice and Ray Lewis and Willis McGahee, the Damian Tomlinson, all these other great halfbacks that played in that era. Um, you know, it's not that anymore. This is more of like a passing NFL now. No, I would agree. And I, I think it's hard because I think in order the Ravens to get a quarterback or, you know, draft a quarterback in that top spot, they need to, they have to trade up. So that I think, you know, you look at three of those top four are probably going quarterbacks, and you realistically in the top 10 or 15, you know, those top four quarterbacks, which I feel like there's a very big discrepancy between those top four going down, you know. But, you know, you got um, Hooker from Tennessee. He did it really good until he got hurt. Um, but, again, at that point in time, after that, you, I feel like there's a very big drop-off, even bigger drop-off after that. So, you know who are they gonna go for? It's I mean I feel like they have to make that trade happen, and you know draft day might be when that trade happens. But if not, you know I feel like you have to get a trade going because if you draft a quarterback, you need to just take whatever you can get from Lamar Jackson, or at the end of the day, he might just not even show up and might just oh, yeah. sit. And you know at that point in time, I I never understand that because what does that help? anybody doesn't help him i mean it helps him because he's getting paid not to do anything but it doesn't help you as a team 
you eventually he's just going to walk and then you're not going to get anything. So why not try and get something for him? And I, I feel the same way with Aaron Rodgers. Just make the trade with the Jets right now. Whether I don't know if it's the Jets declining stuff or it's the Packers declining stuff, but just make the trade. You know what's going to happen. Both teams want it to happen. At the end of the day, just come to an agreement because if you're the Packers and you're trying to get more and more, guess what? Eventually, they're not going to go and you're going to, you know, you're going to fail and you're going to let Rodgers walk and you're not even going to get anything. Or he's going to say, I retire, and then you got nothing out of him. You know, you literally so, got absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, why not try and get something? And like I said, I don't know if it's the Packers or the Jets. I'm not sure which team is the one that's, you know, causing these issues. So the Jets not giving enough or the Packers, you know, what, what is, who is it? Who's the blame? I don't know. But at the end of the day, just, you know, it's those, it's like that pack, you know, he might just walk away. So might as well get something out of him and both teams mutually want it. It's just, I feel like there's just not a team that mutually wants Lamar Jackson. Like, you know, the jets want Aaron Rodgers. I, and I, I agree with that. Chris. You're completely right. You know, um, if he retires, you're completely asked out. You have nothing to negotiate anything with. Even And, I mean, Brett Favre was another one of those quarterbacks who was getting close to retirement, and his legacy carried him on. But, um, you know, how many different teams did Brett Favre get traded to towards the end of his career? Yep. You know, uh, and like you said, it's good to just, just take the trade. Yeah. Whatever you're going to end up getting, just, just get it and move on with it. Ember saying Packers want more, Jets are offering less, which I that's what I thought the case was, but but yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it makes no sense to me, you know. I know, and that's the thing, it's not like the Packers are trying to make this trade to get that quarterback that they, you know, find a quarterback. They need this trade so they can get into the draft higher and get, you know, XYZ quarterback. They're making this trade because, you know, they know Aaron Rodgers and they're ready fully to make Jordan Love their quarterback one. So just make it happen. Yep. Um, I, I, I 100% agree. Because, again, it, it's just the same exact thing like you just said. With, it's would you rather have absolutely nothing or would you at least get something? The greedy hand never gets anything. Isn't there something like that, that's the same. Yeah. But yeah, so it'll be, like I said, with the draft coming up, we'll be interested if that trade happens between the Jets and Packers before with these last couple days. Um, be interesting if Lamar Jackson gets traded because I feel like at the end of the day, if he doesn't get traded, you know, by the draft, he's going to get traded at best week eight probably or right before the season if something happens. Before the trade deadline, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting with those. Um but yeah, like I said, draft coming up, be interesting. Um, also, too, kind of with the draft coming up, we're gonna kind of, you know, we're giving our pre-draft thoughts for uh, teams next year. Um, kind of who who do we think's gonna be the tops? Who you know who thinks, you know, they're gonna go backwards? Uh, kind of let's uh, let's let's start AFC here first, Murph. Uh, kind of what right. what's your thoughts on the AFC? Uh, who who you seen as some favorites? Who do you think you know has some a lot of s- slots to fill? Uh, uh, I think uh, there's a little, kind of a lot of teams in the AFC. Um, you know, the Bills are they're pretty good. I think that's a pretty solid team already. They've kind of got their two legs, and they're very strong on them. Uh, Dolphins, probably like a quarterback, that would definitely be a very, very smart, very smart choice for them. Because not to say Tua isn't great, Tua is good, but uh, Tua with this concussion protocol and him being completely on a, the injury watch list, you know, you need to get somebody who can get in there and start learning your system and become consistent for you. Um, you know, and maybe the Dolphins should get a halfback because Raheem Mostert, I think, I don't even think he's on there anymore. And they definitely need to make some upgrades on their defense. Uh, you know, I think Xavier Howard is on there as a cornerback. I'm not sure if he's still going to be on there by the next season. 
But if he's not on there, or even if he is, you need to get another cornerback to battle both sides of the field. And you, so, you, you're uh, speaking for the Dolphins? Yeah. Um, Dolphins actually uh, traded for uh, Jalen Ramsey this offseason. Oh, did they? They did. See, for Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey, there you go, see? That's what I'm talking about, because now all the other people that they're going to end up going against is that you know, it's usually that the defense has a weak side to it. Now they're not going to have a weak side. Yeah. You know, maybe the middle will be their weak side, but you have quarter, cornerbacks covering the outside receivers to go in. That they're not; these are experienced cornerbacks. Um, in my opinion, Patriots need to get uh, maybe a receiver or two, and the rest need to be focused on their defense. Yeah. And then we'll go from e- uh, AFC East, North, South, and then West. So. Um, and then uh, the Jets, you know, the the Jets need to just focus on getting Aaron Rodgers, and then give Aaron Rodgers weapons, give him a good halfback, give him a good running or uh, a good receiving core, get a nice tight end in there because Aaron Rodgers loves to pass his tight. End. What about you, Vic? What do you think about the AFC East? You know, you know, AFC in just in general, you know. They're, they're getting strong. I feel like there's a bunch of, like, top-tier teams, and then there's kind of some mid-teams and then some bottom teams, you know. I think some of these, you know, looking at AFC North, um, I think uh, you are going to have – I mean, I think the Bengals got to be the favorites coming out of that division. You know, Jerbo, they keep adding more. I'm um, getting some you know, offensive line, some different pieces um, to kind of keep Burrow safe. Um, I think, you know, they're they're going to run through, you know, looking at the Browns, don't know what Deshaun Watson, Steelers are kind of still figuring out what they're fully doing at quarterback. You know, Ravens don't know what they're doing yet. You know, are, we have, are they going to have Lamar? Are they going to have someone else? You know, it's a lot hard to say, but I think Bengals are going to be that team coming out of the North. The East, I, I think you got to go with Bills. You know, they didn't really lose much. I um, don't – I think they got a couple – um. Uh, sorry, wow. Uh, Dom, thanks for the the dab. What I'm thinking about, sorry. Uh, but Bills gotta be the one, you know. Uh, Dolphins, you know, I think have to go. You know, Dolphins. I think it's all gonna depend on Tua. Uh, Patriots, you can never, you know, count on count out on Bill Belichick. Um, I know it hasn't been much, but and then the Jets, you know. You don't know what's happening at quarterback yet. You don't know, so it's hard to get people there. They still have, they do have some young pieces, but I don't think it's going to be enough to overtake the Bills. Um, AFC South. See, I feel like this is a wide open division. You know, the Texans, Colts had bad years. Titans were having okay. I mean, Jacksonville won that division. Trevor Lawrence is starting to play better with um, Peterson as their coach. I think Jags are going to take that division um, just because the Texans and Colts are going to be some young quarterbacks. Tannehill, I think, is not the greatest, but Titans. um, So I feel like Jags are going to come out of that division. And the AFC West, you know, Chargers are doing good. You have the Raiders um, that, you know, have um, a change at quarterback um, with Jimmy G. Will that help? Will that hurt? But you have the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs are the team out of that division. Um, and realistically, if I had this pick, I think, like I said, Chiefs and Bills have to probably be the best two out of that the, the AFC, I think, that are going to represent them. But there's definitely some teams like uh, I feel like the Bengals, um, potentially maybe the Chargers that can kind of maybe compete with those teams. But I feel like it's going to be those two teams, again, kind of coming out in the AFC. Um, now... We'll move our thoughts over the NFC. What's your thoughts on the NFC? Where where do you see the NFC going? Murph. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Because I was gonna. No, you're good. Hold on. I was gonna. Because the chat just did something weird. I'm trying to. Oh, okay. There we go. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what what what's, what's your thoughts on uh the NFC? What what do you what are you thinking based off you know pre pre draft? Where are we thinking here? Pre draft, um, uh, you know the the teams that are gonna be the best coming out of there. Uh, I'll start with the teams that I think are gonna be the best coming out uh post draft, but 
teams that I also want, because you know my favorite, my second favorite team is in here as well. Uh, I think, I don't know about if the Eagles or the Cowboys are really going to benefit from the draft as much because they did have some solid records. Uh, but, you know, uh, or, or either the Vikings, I think. I'm praying to God that the Bears get some good picks and they can start going somewhere alongside of the Falcons because those are two of my favorite old-time teams. Uh, like the Jay Cutler, Matt Ryan, uh, Roddy White era really made me a fan of those two teams. So I am hoping that they can get somewhere with these with this draft. Um, the Rams definitely need to look at some stuff because 5-12 and 12 for the season is kind of crazy for a, a team that did go to the Super Bowl and win. Cardinals, you know, they 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 need to. I don't know. They need to get a new head coach or something. Which they did. They, they did get. Like I said, it's either Eagles offense or defense. I'm trying. I'm blanking on which one uh, went with them. I know one went to the Cardinals and one went to the Colts. I believe it's offense with the uh, Colts, defense with the Cardinals. If I remember correctly. I mean, that's a good addition. You know, uh, I think they really need to revamp their entire franchise because. Since Anquan Bowden and what was it, Carson Palmer, that was his first quarterback, Anquan Bowden. You know, that was the only time. And then uh, against the Steelers, when they went to the Super Bowl against the Steelers, um, when Santonio Holmes was on there, that was the last time they ever did a good job. Uh, you know, and they've been not necessarily negative. I mean, they could be negative this whole time, record wise. Uh, the Niners did great. So I don't think they're going to benefit much. But uh, one thing that I do want to make a note of is that Alvin Kamara is getting a little bit older now. And, you know, uh, a lot of this money that the Saints have, I'm sure they're spending it on keeping Alvin Kamara. But maybe start scouting halfbacks for when either Alvin Kamara gets tired of the Saints or he's, his injuries are becoming a little bit more. And I know that Michael Thomas is still relatively but we didn't hear much from Michael Thomas these last couple of years. So I do hope that they can figure something out for him. And they, the Saints need to focus on getting defensive picks because their defense has been falling apart. Okay. I, I don't – that's not – you know, I think uh, – yeah, that's pretty much it, you know. I really hope the Bears, the Rams, the Cardinals um, – you know, the Lions, I hope they all do some good work in the Falcons. And the Saints need to look for their defensive picks. Yeah, the, the NFC is uh, interesting. I, I see two divisions that I think are going to be, you know, I don't. I feel like there's a pretty solid line of what teams are going to be coming out. And then there's a couple, you know, two divisions that I feel like who knows what's going to happen, you know. <laughs> looking, you know, looking at NFC North, I feel like that's a you know wide open division. You know the Lions are getting better. You know they got us. You know they're getting some youth back. You know, um, you know they're getting some different good players. Um, I know they kind of had uh, some bad stuff recently. I know one of their top players or one of their better players actually just got suspended for six games due to uh, gambling in the facility. And they also had another player that got suspended for gambling in the facility for six and then they have two people that got suspended indefinitely but i feel like the two that got suspended indefinitely aren't like major parts of their team but you know it's still something to kind of note but again you know the bears you know they have some young pieces but you know how is Jalen fields gonna do you know lions are young packers how how is jordan love gonna do i think for how well the Packers has done i think they can still win the division knowing that you know jordan love can probably come in and you know carry the burden or you know it's hard it's gonna be hard to follow up rogers but rot you know everyone said that to rogers when he was following up brett Favre. um but i think he you know with the team that green bay packers have i think he can go and then, you know, the Vikings, you, you know, they're they're getting some older ones, you know. Um, oh, why am I – I want to say Bradford, but it's not Bradford. Uh, Cousins, sorry, Cousins. Cousins, you know, has been playing well. I feel like some of their offensive weapons that they were relying on kind of got a little older. Um, so I, 
I don't think they're going to – I think they're going to be down with the Bears potentially the one. But I, I think I have to go probably Green Bay Packers out of the NFC North. The East, I think it's going to be between the Cowboys and Eagles. I feel like the Eagles lost some but gained some. And so, same with the Cowboys. The Cowboys didn't – I don't feel like really lost a whole lot. They you know they gained some of the Grand Brown Cooks, which is a deep threat. I know he's a little bit older. But I think those two teams are going to be the ones. Like Giants, I think they had a kind of okay season. Redskin, uh, sorry, the Commanders are uh, kind of trying to still figure out their identity on who they have at quarterback and stuff like that. Um, so I think those two, Eagles and Cowboys, are going to kind of be the teams out of the NFC East. You know, as much as I hate to say the Cowboys coming out of the NFC East, I, you know, I feel like it's going to be one of those two. Again, the South, I feel like that division's wide open. You know, we have the Falcons, who has Dennis Rinder, um, who's going to be, you know, probably become the full starter. How is he going to do? Carolina is, you know, most likely going to draft a quarterback with their number one overall pick. Who are they going to pick? How is he going to, you know, help this team? Uh, the Saints, again, you know, are they're, they're still, you know, they have their quarterback. How are they going to do? They're still kind of getting better, but how are they going to do? You know, the Bucks just lost Brady, so they're kind of in a quarterback kind of scramble as well. How are they going to do? You know, I know they kind of dropped some of those players, some of those players, you know, older time players time just because Brady was there. Um, but yeah, so how are, you know, it's going to be, I don't even know who to pick out of the NFC South. Um, I think I'm going to probably either I'd say saints or bucks knowing that they're going to probably have a quarterback there that's been in the league before. So that's going to help them some compared to, you know, the Falcons and um, Panthers having smaller, um, you know, newer quarterbacks. So, but I, I, I don't know which one to pick out. I realistically think the South's only going to probably have one team. I think, you know, NFC East and NFC West are going to be the two that have, you know, most of those extra teams in the draft that, you know, get the play in games or whatever, essentially the five through seven seeds. Then NFC West, I think, you know, Niners have to be the team you talk about, you know, Trey Lance, you know, who, who's going to be their quarterback. You don't know, but their defense is solid. I think San Francisco is going to repeat. You know, I think the Cardinals with a new coach, they could get better, but I think they have some issues they need to address. Rams, it's hard to tell. Are they going to do good? Are they going to do bad? I know they trade some of their best players away, so they had some kind of extra salary, but it'll be interesting to see what they do. You know, they got rid of Bo – they released Bobby Wagner. They um, traded Jalen Ramsey, you know, leaving some of these, like, things to get them more money. How will they do – um, you know, offensive side, I still feel like they have all those weapons that they had when they went to the Super Bowl two years ago. So, you know, can they get their offense on par and have a defense that's going to be able to stop? Then Seahawks, you know, I think, you know, as long as Geno plays the way Geno played this last year, I think Seahawks can definitely be a playoff team. Um, but I think, like I said, Niners are going to come out. And, I mean, I know it might be a bias, but I think we're going to, you know, Niners and the Eagles are probably going to be the two best teams uh, coming out of the NFC. Um, but yeah, that's that's my thoughts on it. Um, I can agree. Who? Well, well, and you know, we're kind of getting down to the last little bit, so uh, let's uh, let's end this. Who is your favorite to win the Super Bowl, Murph? Non-biased, right? Non-biased opinion. Who, who, who do you think will win the Super Bowl at the end of the day? At the end of the day, I genuinely believe that. Uh, I want to say, you know, I, I, I would like to say any other team aside from the Chiefs. <laughs> But I think it might genuinely be the the Eagles, in my opinion, because they got so close, and I think uh, this year they're going to come back with a real vengeance because, you know, a lot of those teams, they, they you know, they build that, not necessarily regret, but uh, like that pent-up whatever, like that pent-up passion to, yeah. to get on this, uh, you know, all they see is red. And I would love to see the Eagles – come out and um, you know grind just as hard as they did this year and win the Super Bowl 
instead of making it that far and just to get upset, you know, that would be a beautiful thing to see. But I, I, I think it's I can't choose between the Eagles or the Chiefs because the Chiefs have just been going insane these last handful of years, and they're a very consistent team. What about you, Vicious? So with me, um, I, as much you know, being the Eagles fan. I think it's going to be the Chiefs. You know, uh, they. I don't feel like they lost a whole lot. Um, I even think they, you know, they lost Juju Smith, but I, uh, I'm trying to remember. I know they signed a receiver that's pretty good to kind of take over Juju Smith's load. Um, but you know, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, you know, Andy Reid still being there. I think they're going to be a tough team. Um, you know, I think Eagles definitely have a shot out of, you know, those top four teams that I said. I I just feel like Eagles didn't lose a whole lot on offense, but they lost a lot on defense. Um, on defense side, you know, they kind of lost some of their starters, Gardner Johnson, um, Edwards. Um, so they lost some of that stuff. Um, you know, I know they signed a couple people um, to later contracts towards the end of the year, um, like Adamic and Sue, but I believe he uh, retired so there's a bunch of these guys that um, retire. You know, Eagles have a new offense and defensive coordinator, um, which I think is going to, you know, could, you know, it's still the same head man, but those offense defense coordinators can kind of make some changes. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think Chiefs have to be the favorites coming out, at least pre-draft. Um, you know, I feel like they, like I said, didn't lose a lot. Um, they have, you know, a lot of their stuff. If they did lose, they – did replace those people. So it will be, in my mind, it's going to be Chiefs, but it will be interesting to see uh, what happens. I mean, injuries and stuff like that can play a big part, but at the end of the day, I think, yeah, Chiefs are going to be the team uh, that I'm looking for, looking to probably repeating as champs. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going to be the uh, end of the podcast, unless you have anything else you want to bring up, Murph, for our uh, NFL topics today. No, sir. I believe that's it, brother man. Okay. Um, uh, but, yeah, so well, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Hurts this season with new contract and how the Eagles fans are. Yep, I, I agree, Ember. I definitely agree with you on that one. But, uh. This is going to be the end of Talking Sports Episode 3. Um, we appreciate all of you that you know tuned in why we did this live, as well as all of you that's tuned in on YouTube. Um, but let us know your comments. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on our topics? Uh, do you have anything, you know, what's your thought? You know, we talked about Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts' new contract. We talked a little bit about the draft. Um, Kind of our perspective of pre-draft, who, what teams we think uh, are going to be good, you know, with you know who we think is going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, so yeah, let us know your thoughts. Um, again, we appreciate all you that you know tune in live, watch us on YouTube, um, and like I said, if you have any comments or, or anything that you think that we should talk about, um, let us know. You know, we have some future things kind of getting in the works about doing like a. A Madden one where we play Madden and uh, talk about Madden. Uh, maybe talking about um, going a little bit into NBA playoffs. A um, couple of things, you know, that have been going on in the NBA playoffs recently. Um, but, yeah, just let us know. Um, but we appreciate all you, and uh, we have hope you guys have a fantastic 